everyone. Um, thank you for everyone that's here and joining us today. I am Rachel Roy, and I am going to take off my mask so I can talk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I am the Executive Director of the Greater Sitka Chamber of Commerce and Visit Sitka, and I'm really excited about this project and to be able to give the community an update and our members an update about uh, the Sitka TV show and some of the work that Visit Sitka is doing. Um, we are, um, the chamber has, our office is closed, um, but we do are operating. Um, we are there every day and working really hard to help get information out to everyone about um, how we can kind of get through this and also looking at how we can uh, work to help serve our community and uh, looking forward. The, the work that Visit Sitka is doing is that our visitor center is open and um, it is open from 10 to 4 uh, Monday through Friday. We have visitors coming in every day, uh, not a whole lot, but they're definitely coming and, and chatting with us and getting information. Uh, many of our operators are, are running. I just talked to the Zodiac, Sika Zodiac Tours, and he's got his boat out. So I think that's, um, that's been really encouraging that um, businesses are staying operating so that they will be ready to operate next season. Um, we are, this is one of the projects that Visit Sika has been working on for a couple years, um, but we were able to make um, this the kind of the upcoming um, few weeks of project happen with a relationship with Driven Equation. Um, we'll talk a little bit about our, um, the process that we've gone through so far and where we're at today and what's to come. And um, there will be a time, a chance for us to do some sharing at the end as time allows. A little bit about the tech is that we have uh, so we have some folks in the room. There is a microphone in front of everyone, and if you push the button, the red light turns on. That makes your mic cut, and it uh, will help for recording for the Zoom, as well as us in the room to be able to hear you. Um, we also have on the Zoom, if you use the chat function, um, I am monitoring them here on the phone, and I will be able to ask those questions and of uh, Stephen, or if you want to share something, if you would put that in the chat. If you have ideas or want to be contacted for a follow-up, um, just put that information in there and we'll capture all of those notes as well. Um, let's see. Well, I have had the pleasure of getting to know Stephen Morrison. He is, um, he is here from California. Able to, great. Um, he's here from California and he has a really um, a neat history and a, a neat ear for listening which I've been really um, it's been a real treat to, to be able to spend some time with him um, and can I actually borrow that page? It's not, I didn't find one. So I'm going to read his bio. Oh, Come on. I to do that. He was born. <laughs> listen. This is how we do this. Oh, okay, so okay, there's a protocol. All there right. is, there is, and it's cool. All right. So he was born in Santa Monica, California. He earned his Bachelor of Arts from the University of California, Santa Barbara, where he was accepted into the World Farm Writers Workshop and won the Corin Award for Best Screenplay. Following this, he earned his Master's of Fine Arts in Screenwriting from Chapman University and was honored with as a Dodge Fellowship Scholar. He is a co-founder co of Horsehead Cinema Production Company. Here, he co-wrote and produced the independent feature, A Sweetest Kiss, uh, distributed by House of Film and winner of Best Feature at Los Angeles Film Awards and Los Angeles Independent Film Festival Awards. He has been hired on this assignment to write for OWN, a lifetime, Lewitt Kirkman, Sylvian Avenue, Symphony Pictures, and Driven Equation. So thank you for being here, and uh, we're excited to hear more. Let me just turn it over to you, and um, we, I, I guess, maybe we just want to take a second and introduce everyone that's okay. here in the room, uh, because I want to, um, 
give a chance for Patty to, okay. to say hello as well, because Patty has been part of this project for uh, since the beginning. Since the beginning, I and Patty Bue, uh, um, yeah, I'm working in this project since 2018. Uh, because of me, we uh, start everything uh, with dry equation, and then after dry equation, start meeting all the people here. I'm helping the team to go on with the project. That's my main uh, function as an executive professor. Okay, thank you. Um, so um, go ahead, Pat. Would you introduce yourself? Hello, my name is Pat Alexander, and uh, I was uh, a resident of Sitka back in the 50s, and my family moved away to Nevada, and I came back in 98, and uh, Sitka is a lovely place to be. We're happy that you're here, Stephen, and we're looking forward to seeing this uh, wonderful product that you're producing. If you have um, room for extras, my, my partner Paulette <laughs> and I uh, stand ready to serve. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> ah, shucks. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. It's uh, good to be here amongst you today. My name is Paulette Morel. My fan cat name is Shkunyek, and it's an honor to be here. Um, as Patricia said, she is a Sitka person, and I was born here in Sitka along with the rest of my siblings. And my father, my mother, um, was born in Wrangell, so this is home for us. And I understand that you're going to be telling some very important stories during a time that is crucial in our society that can help the world with, um, with feelings and thoughts and ideas. The work that you will be doing and have been doing is very important. So I'm here just to, uh, just to witness that work, to uh, maybe be a part of the conversation, but most of all to add blessings to what you're doing. And I'm looking forward to you sharing and hearing a little bit more about this project. Sounds like we're in a room of storytellers. So, Bush. Sheesh. Thank you. And we have Dan. Yeah. Dan is behind the TV, so thank you, Dan, for being here. Okay. He's broadcasting this on the local television. And then we also have Mike Pruitt, and she is here. Uh, she works at Visit Sitka and is doing visitor services and also our blog which you can go on to visitsitka.org slash blog and read some really cool stories um, about Sitka. Right now, we just, uh, our latest blog was about Dub Island, and so you can kind of see some of the really neat things that they have going out there. We have lots of folks, um, oh, go ahead and, do you want to just introduce yourself? You really can introduce me. Well, yeah. this, is, <laughs> this is the woman behind the Sitka soup, which has been wonderful. Um, uh, Suzanne and she is um, yes a good supporter of the chamber so we thank you for being here um, I do also have on our zoom call is Elena Sardinia and she is um, a part of driven equation and Raphael is also on and so you may have met them we've had them on the chamber program a couple different times and so they'll actually be here next week and be able to um, meet more of you and engage. It looks like we have a really nice group of people on, on the Zoom, so thank you for participating. I don't want to waste any more time. Let's turn it over to Stephen and hear about what the creative and, and what has been going on with this project, so. Sure. All right. Hello. Well, start off by saying a thank you to Patty uh, and Rachel and also Raphael and Helena for bringing me onto this project and Sitka has really been a wonderful time, a really wonderful time. E regardless of the work, it's been a wonderful time, the nature and the people. Um, I, 
really enjoyed it. So thank you for that. Otherwise, and with the project, um, I'll just I'll give you a, a history of from the beginning, how it started, and where we are now with what's going on. So let's see. Originally, um, I actually knew Raphael and Helena because they were my screenwriting students <laughs> way back when, years ago now. And I hadn't talked to them for several years, which is how it goes. But with film and that industry, you always keep in touch with your students and your professors because people cross paths and, and end up working together and things like that. And a couple of years have went by, and I think I, Helena contacted me for something, and we met for something else. She was looking for material. And then about six months later, she contacted me again and said, we have this project, would you be interested? And I said, well, let's hear, let's hear about it, let's hear what you have. And so they didn't have much, <laughs> which, which isn't unusual for producers, actually. They said, we have a location, and we know some things about the place. We've each been there. We love it. Um, help us. Let, let, let's do something. And I said, OK. So the, the first step for me, which is one of the reasons why I like working on assignment as opposed to doing my own material, is it's, it's kind of a psychology experiment. And so I'm not just interpreting Sika. I'm interpreting what Raphael and Hela, Helena view of Sitka. And so I interviewed them pretty extensively and, and was trying to figure out what, what Sitka means to them. And through that original process, uh, I, I, what I extrapolated from them was that Sitka ultimately meant healing. And so at that point, we had some thematic foundation of healing. And so I thought about it a little bit more, and I said, OK, I, I know Raphael and Helena's material. We have a, a good theme that's interesting to me. Um, I would like to be involved. And so I said, OK, let, let's do this. And this is 2018 when this happened. And then we, we talked here and there, here and there, and we were saying, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And most you know, commercial pro productions or, you know, as we would say, Hollywood films, they start with a concept or an idea, something Jurassic Park. Uh, genetically engineered dinosaurs run loose on an island, something like that. But unlike that, myself and Rafa and Helena, we work with character first. We're not thinking up big concept ideas that are hugely commercial Star Wars or Star Trek. We're thinking about people. And we're thinking about the, the personalities and the backstories and the uniqueness and the emotional connection to individuals. So we wanted to start with that. And that, that caters to all three of us, which was great, because I, you, you want to be on the same sentiment as your producers are, of course. And so they started talking to me about characters that were of intrigue and unique to Sitka. And I started to do tons of research of Sitka. And at the same time, while wanting to do an in-depth character study, they also made it clear to me that this project should also hopefully increase tourism and the desire to come to Sitka, which is a big part of it. So, not that there's just terrible things here, but you can't just show terrible stuff. <laughs> you can't just show awful things. So therein lies often a, um, a difficulty of we want to do authentic characters unique to Sitka, but we also want to do something fun and adventurous that make people want to come to Sitka. So that was the the, the the foundational components of what we're trying to do. 
So from there we decided what are some of the characters that we feel represent Sitka accurately and authentically. So one aspect or one of the storylines which we initiated is the, the Native Alaskan storyline. We felt that was um, indicative of, of course, this area and also one that hadn't been represented necessarily well or really at all uh, in mainstream media. So we have that storyline. We also wanted to do a storyline of commercial fishermen or commercial fisherwoman or charter fishermen or charter fisherwoman because that is a job and career that's also specific to Sitka and we felt that was, you couldn't bring up Sitka and not have fishing be part of it. That's absolutely part of it. Uh, and then we had one more story, or excuse me, we had a couple more storylines. The next storyline we have is revolving around, I'm just calling him a newcomer. It would, this would be the perspective of what tourists would take in, or someone that hasn't been here, that they would be seeing it from their eyes. So it's someone new or recently new to Sitka, and so that's hopefully how the audience would be interpreting and taking in. They would be seeing the world how that viewer sees or takes in the world. And then we also have another storyline of what, I don't think we officially called it this, but now that I've been here, I'm calling it this. I'm calling it a transplant. So it's someone that was from the lower 48 or somewhere else in Sitka, excuse me, somewhere else outside of Sitka, and now transplanted and now permanently lives in Sitka. So we have those four main storylines, and then we have a fifth character, and without giving away too much, the fifth character is what those four storylines revolve around. Uh, this fifth character would be a wealthy, we'd say business owner or politician in the community, and at the end of the pilot, at least this is currently how we have it, This this business owner or politician goes missing. And so the, the external plot of this story is why this person is missing, how they became missing, and how these other four characters or storylines are involved. But as we dig deeper, it's not so much about that character missing or the or the plot of finding that character. It's about the backstory and the depth of the other four storylines and those characters involved. So hopefully that's an overview of the situation. Uh, since and then they they sent me here. <laughs> so we have we have we have this we have all this big soup together. But okay, this is what we think we're gonna do. And then they sent me here. And who knows what's going to happen. Maybe I see things totally differently when I come here. Maybe I, maybe I agree to everything. So, oh, this is great. This, is, this exactly lines up with everything that we were going to do. Let's start writing right away. Um, but I, I need to know the, the specificity of the locations, particularly while being here, because that's something that is going to intrigue an audience, because everything's so beautiful and connected to nature. And then also interviewing and meeting as many people as I can, because that's going to let me know how Sitka really relates to healing. Everything, as I was saying, needs to come back to healing. So I've done a combination of, geez, I, 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 thankfully I, and with the help, I've been hiking, I've been fishing. Uh, running, boating, eating, uh, interviewing tons of people, um, everything, groceries, uh, I can't even, the airport, um, I've done a lot of stuff in this time period, and I feel that I have, I feel now that I have a good sense and a good, you can never get everything, but I have a good sense 
and a good handle on what I feel we can really do to make things happen for this project. And moving forward, I, I suppose what will happen is I will, I will bring all my notes together and I will talk to Raphael and Helena and, and say, this is everything we discussed. <laughs> now this is everything I want. <laughs> and we'll see something, maybe, maybe, oh no, we're not doing any of that, we're going back to everything, or they'll agree with some of the things, as, as always with producers and writers, some things, yes, we love this, and some things not, and, and we'll come to some communal decision on what to do, and then I'll start first outlining and preparing to write the script. I don't, I think from an outside perspective, you'd think I'd just start writing and get to it, but that's really actually a small portion of the process. It probably actually really only takes me maybe a few days to a week to want to sit down to start typing and actually writing. Most of the process is planning and prepping, knowing what scene is gonna go where, every single scene involved, how many scenes each character is gonna have, the whole outline of the of the TV pilot episode. So I will have that all in my head before I actually sit down and start writing this. So like I said, when I get back, I'll suggest changes and we'll come to communal decision and then I'll do an outline for them, which is kind of maybe a paragraph or so per scene. And so they'll get a sense of what's gonna happen throughout the episode. And then we'll go back and forth, this looks good, this doesn't, this looks good, this doesn't, and then I'll write the script. And of course things can change though once you write the script too. And maybe things will change for me as well. I'll, I'll read something and I go, this, this didn't work how I felt it. We're not feeling an emotion and I need more time with this character. Or uh, this really works well, I, I wasn't expecting that relationship to work well. Let's spend more time on this, what do you guys think? So it's always kind of a back and forth uh, until we've reached the, the final draft of the script and until other directors and actors ruin it for me. <laughs> um, just kidding. Uh, hopefully they're interpreting the material as the producers and I see it. And I think that's kind of an overview from the beginning to where we are right now with the process. There are specifics that I have for each character, or we have for each character, and we could give that more, but I, I don't feel that's necessary for the, for the general overview of what's going on here. I believe that's everything. Um, yeah. So hopefully I answered some questions you got into a little bit understanding of how it goes. And I believe that's it. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Great. Well, for those folks that are on the Zoom, I see there's a good group of people there. If you have any comments or questions or things that um, Stephen might have sparked in your mind, um, please put those in the chat and I will read them out loud to the the group and we can um, pose those questions. Um, to first start out, I can kind of talk about um, what is happening next week. Um, so the kind of the, the people who could speak to all of what does filming a TV show look like will actually be in town. Um, and they, um, so Helena and Raphael will be flying in and they'll be with us in Sitka for the next three weeks. Um, and being able to go and look at some locations, be um, really um, engrossed in the, in the community and um, have, we actually have a film crew coming up and so Visit Sitka is one of our collateral um, development pieces this year is getting video content. And so our video content can be um, shared um, we're doing uh, themes with the wilderness, adventure, fishing. Um, we have a food uh, theme. We also have a um, activities theme that will get uh, all of our attractions highlighted. And the um, uh, 
Oh, let's see. We have a. Um, what are they? Help me out, Micah. Um, Where? Oh, meetings and conventions. Yeah. And so we'll be looking at um, that market and giving a visual for what um, for what Sitka is uh, is like. It's also going to be a visual for our brand, which we've been developing through our website and we see with the visitor guides. Um, this is an opportunity for us to, one, support the Sika TV show to get some filming done, and two, get our promotional videos done, which we've really been um, wanting to be able to do. Um, so while, while they're in town filming for the commercials, we'll be able to capture some of that uh, visual that will go in this teaser that Steven is, is working on writing. The teaser that then gets uh, promoted to the um, to the networks. And so that, that goes to the question that Raul West asked, has this been picked up by a network yet? Do you want to answer that? No. Do you know about the process for that? I do. How that looks? But this has not been picked up by a network or studio, and which is not unusual at this stage of the process. If you don't have intellectual property, if this, if this was a book, if this was a movie, if this was an already previously existing person, then that would be something that a network or a studio might be interested in on early in the process. But because this is fictionalized characters, there, there isn't enough sample material or content yet for a network or studio to be involved. They need to have some currency. So once you have a script, or once you have certain talent attached, then you can, and from an independent project, which this is, then you can start to um, meet with you know networks or studios. But at this process, no, it hasn't been picked up by a network, and, and they wouldn't want to look at anything yet because we don't have any currency for them to show. Thank you. Um, so what we will be doing um, to kind of capture and support there being um, of the video footage capturing um, is that we are going to be working with uh, Visit Sika Partners and Community uh, attractions and locations to um, to film that footage. There will be footage that's that's used that may be um, edited differently to give the through the lens of the um, the TV show because it will definitely have a different vibe than what we're looking for with Visit Sitka's commercials. And um, I'm just really excited about how the the partnership has been able to work. We. Um, I also just want to say that the, the whole process has been very um, collaborative and inclusive and um, there's been a lot of people in the community that have interacted uh, along the way and been able to kind of, um, I feel like been heard is always how I felt. People that have interacted with this project have really felt like they um, you know, they, there was impact and, and listening because it's the people is what this comes down to, and so our our stories and how we interact with our with our Sitka is um, is really really special. So, um, does anyone want to add anything that's in the room? I don't see any other chats um, here on the on the Zoom, but um, Rafael or, or Helena, if you wanted to add anything, um, definitely please do. I uh, got pretty excited to hear that there would be a mystery. So that is, that is fun. Go ahead, Dan. I have a couple of questions. Oh, One, has the funds been raised to pay for it? Because well, okay. that's a significant part of film making. And secondly, at one time there was some thought of having eight different segments. Where are you limited now? Is it one show or okay. many parts? Great. 
to, can you answer some of that? Um, uh, yes, yeah. that. The funding is above my pay grade, yes. so <laughs> someone else will have to comment on that part. Um, yes, we are, as you're saying, eight different parts. We are now a limited series, so initially we're working on the pilot for a eight episode season. So it would be eight different episodes. Good question, thank you. So we did hear you, uh, oh, we could hear you if you want to talk a little bit. Michael, would you be able to put it on speaker view? Um, and uh, do you want to share a little bit of information? Helena or Raphael? Hi. Hi, everyone. No, I just wanted to say overall that thanks everybody for being here today with Steve. Um, this travel to sit to this time around is a very important step for us in the project because he has to really experience now and, and meet you guys in the interview and really see what we saw. So we are very excited to move to the next step on our process, which is outlining, like he said, and begin right with the, the scripts. So thank you again, and we'll be there soon. Sure. <laughs> um, could you speak a little bit to where um, you're at with funding and what you might see to come uh, as funding needs and kind of how that how that will play out? Hey guys. Hi. Um, I first of all would like to say how uh, I might I don't know if funny is the right word. I would say quite um quite I actually had expected to see the three of you guys sitting there because you three of you guys made such such an important package of what the project is now. Obviously on the right we have Patricia who we started everything, you know, years ago and we go back so long and then uh, Rachel who has been such a big supporter of us since the first day when she said, we need to contact this guy. And then Rachel has opened her eyes, <laughs> and her, her arms to us and answered any questions we needed. And while well, Stephen that was um, met us six years ago, and then like, I had no idea what the industry was like. But you know, we're, um, I feel like we're, we grow um, every, with every project. We obviously, at first when we started, the idea of the show, our idea of what the project would be was a whole different thing. We, we didn't have the, the knowledge of how the industry works as we have now. And we also understood that the growth of a project like this uh, needs to take its time and things happen when uh, when we're all ready to do so. And as two years have passed, we have come to understand how many important stories there are to tell in Sika and how like, the huge um, task that we have in making sure that we're telling the truth and making sure that obviously at the end of the day as you make your feel like all the emotions through whoever is watching but emotion is very broad and there's so many ways that you can evolve that and there's so many different ways that a TV show about Sika can go but we have trying to do our best to you know be as honest as we can. So I'm very happy that Stephen has had a long experience. If this was the past year and a half, he has made me be listening to it when I go, blah, 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 blah. I'm all sick of this, sick of this, in this community. So I'm um, quite excited in terms of funding. Uh, we, the next step is um, we, with the footage that we're getting, which we're shooting the project in Rachel, with the material that and the research that's sitting at the moment, we hopefully we want to be, be ready to start introducing it to a few different players in the industry. Now it's the point that we get out of the town a little bit, and the way funding works is us teaching to the industry. What is the industry? It goes from you know, agents to other production companies to streaming to studios. And you know the uh, the, the stakeholders into how this works is a whole different thing. I could spend hours trying to tell you guys what's the process like, but I would say that it's about making people with money in the TV industry come along with the project that we have, trust us as you know people, and uh, to connect to the story and a develop a developing and teaching process can take long, can be quick, we don't know. We, we, I feel like we, we want to be ready um, to, you know, to start showing it to the outside world by, uh, in the next few months. And how funding works is, um, 
there's obviously different ways of doing it, but the perfect scenario would be once we're ready with the content of what the show is 100%, we will be you know having the meetings as I mentioned and having a network or, or a production company push it and signing, deal, signing a deal with and starting to officially develop it with a studio supporting us. So technically the funding is not as we're going to get this funding and then we're selling this to a streaming service. Most likely this happens all together. I hope I was clear and did I answer your question, Rachel? I believe so. Um, I, I, I wonder if you could talk to, um, now that people are hearing about this project, what, how could they participate, uh, contribute, or, um, and what are you looking for as far as the community, uh, if there was something that you would need from the community to, um, to share? I think first of all is, um, we're open for anyone. We're open about listening to stories and perspectives and knowing your specific experience. Uh, that's one thing that we've always tried to be open with every single time that we have traveled to Sika or the you know people that reach out to us via email or Facebook. Uh, please continue to do so. We, it's very important for us to learn it as many stories as we can. Yes, this is not a reality show, and yes, this is a scripted fiction TV show. Um, that being said, it doesn't mean that real life stories are not based on what we're creating, because we have been always, Elena, Steve and I, we have always talked about so many stories that either we have read or stories that we have heard. So please continue to do that. It's really inspiring for us to be hearing your own personal experiences of what Sika means to you, what the community of Sika has represented in your life, and anything that you have experienced that has connected you to um, that beautiful island that we're, where we're attempting to represent truthfully. So um, if that you know, is an answer, it's, I would say as many, uh, you know, just when, it, when we need resources is uh, connecting with us. Um, you know, making sure you're telling your story and you know, whenever we are there and letting her be there next week and like for two weeks is being as you all the community has been to us very welcome and um and supportive. Yeah, I just wanna add one thing to Raphael's um each that um we like to hear all kinds of stories, even if it's like the little bit details about Sitka that makes you, makes you stay there, or the reason why it's such to move there. Um, different kinds of stories really should be of healing, that's what we're looking for too. And in any scale, it could be little things that happen every day or big events that on your life. It looks like if you are on the Zoom, you should be able to unmute and you could share if you can, if this sparked an idea or um, you have a comment or about the project. Great. So um, I just want to add that we at Visit Sitka and the Chamber will be working on our schedule for filming. Um, on Monday, we're um, going to put our um, layout for every day and what we'll be looking like. And so we will be reaching out to our partners to look at you know scheduling the time. Um, if you are interested in participating, uh, please give us give me a call at the office. I'm at 747-8604 or send me an email at director at um, I had a couple, right after I sent the reminder email today, I had a couple members say, hey, let me, I wanna help. So um, I love that because knowing that you are wanting to help um, helps me to just um, put you on the list and it's, it's a real way that we can help support and promote your business as part of what Sitka has to offer I think that's one thing that I really um, 
we're so fortunate that we have so such a diversity of activities, such a diversity of, of industries and things in our community, and I'm really excited to be able to share that in a visual way. Um, we'll also be doing some photography, and uh, we're working on stories for our 2021-22 visitor guide. Um, the visitor guide is um, has been a really special project that that we were able to make it into a magazine style and through lots of efforts, uh, getting the, the stories written though and telling the stories about our, our businesses and the experiences you can have while you're here. It's been such a treat. Micah does a lot of the writing for that and our whole team um, works on, we're working on you know, what stories can we tell this year? Um, what are the things that the industry is looking at and what are the trends in our visitors so that we can um, really build a story that's compelling so that visitors choose Sitka when they're um, booking their travels into Alaska. And um, so we would love to hear from you on that as well. Uh, but definitely reach out if, if, if you're interested in participating in the filming that's coming up. Uh, we need extras, mm -hmm. so we're going to have, we need some people that will, you know, be walking on the trails and doing the different activities that we have in the museums and things. And so, uh, if you are interested and uh, might be available the week of the 17th, please let us know. Um, but like I said, we'll have that detailed schedule, so we'd love to fill in with some of our, um, our local gems as well. Um, so yes, that is happening. And so if you see our film crew, definitely say hi, wave at us. And um, it's a, you know, it's just gonna be, put all your uh, positive thoughts about having great weather that week. Um, <laughs> and um, just, it's, it's a really, really exciting time for us. And it's been encouraging to be doing a creative project that is really forward thinking. And we're thinking about how we can um, really position Sitka and share our story. Um, we'll use these videos that we're working on for um, on our social media. Um, we'll use it, say if we're at a convention and we're promoting um, them choosing us, choosing our location for their next rotation. Um, we'll use the meetings and convention. Um, there will be ability for people who are featured in the visitor um, commercials to share those, um, you know, to promote them as well on their social media. So I think it'll be a really uh, great way and it'll also um, enhance our website uh, as we're developing that. Um, definitely check out our blog and some of the new things that are happening. Oh, the Alaska Specials page. So we were just um, launching an Alaska Specials page which allows um, Sitka businesses and um, to promote if they have a, a special rate or a special tour or something that they are doing to encourage Alaskans to travel to Sitka. And um, so there are, we already have some listed uh, that we're putting, putting in content to be able to go live with that. And so if you have, if you have a Alaska special or some uh, or a special tour that's happening uh, this summer um, now through September even I think even we'll shift it to a, like a winter special um, as we go forward but that's a, that's something new that's coming out and so let us know if you have something we can share and we'll be using our um, outreach to get those those specials um, to the consumers so definitely um, keep us in the loop also if you have any if you have changed your hours or anything, I know we sent out surveys earlier in the season. Uh, if you've got an update, please give us a call at the visitor center or email my <coughs> or visit sickbit.org. Um, and I'm just going on. But anything anyone has to add before we end? Uh, I sure appreciate everyone coming and thank you to the Centennial Hall for this great space. I feel like we could do more of these combo meetings. It's really nice to have the technology here in the building. and um, So I thank you, those who were able to come, and thanks for those online. And we will be in touch soon with another update. So thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Yeah.